Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of the Second Shot After Show. This episode has spoilers for episode two, so if you don't want the spoilers, go back and watch that. Also, remember, this specific video series is not family friendly, so we have our drinks, we have our mouths, it's prepared. Yeah. But not yet. So, here we go. Episode two of our adventure starts now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here we are talking about episode two and the fun that came from that adventure. Just as a recap, the players went into the sewers in an attempt to wipe out the rest of their uh, jail sentence and were to clear out whatever's been killing the people that have been in the sewers. After coming across a variety of creatures, they eventually came to where some people, they don't quite know who yet, have been taming or feeding a gelatinous cube. And in that, we only had one death this time. Uh, our friend Dante Bo here uh, managed to bite the dust, which we'll talk about here in a second, but they did manage the other three to wipe out the gelatinous cube and survive. More so like with that. that, let's do a toast to our dead PCs, to Dante, to Sean, to Flynnmo, and to Radimus. Rest in peace. My already. Here, here. Good, good show, fellas. We're not even two minutes into the video, Manny. How did you drink it all? It's my second cup of the night. They get a third, baby. It's Tuesday night. <laughs> it's Tuesday right. night. That's right. Tuesday, yeah, we record these on Tuesday nights if you haven't uh, figured that out. so. It's also all pre-recorded, so we, if the days don't make sense, don't worry about it. Just focus on the content. That's true as well. <laughs> So, episode hook. So, what did you guys think? Would you think that that scenario, to would that be a good starting point for a larger adventure where someone trying to start a campaign that way? That's definitely, uh, at least if I think, that's definitely a classic one that I've seen before. It's definitely more, like, compared to, like, last week, I would say, if other guys would agree, it's, like, definitely more of a railroad because we are quite literally incarcerated within like boundaries of each other and so we are getting pushed into a first mission together but when it comes to like setting up a group or setting something up it's a very from what i've seen very classic way to get a group together in D D. and then especially going throughout for such a low level party i was wondering like are we gonna see rats and we did like i don't know for why but like every like low level low level encounter i've always seen like rats fight it's rats or, like, a rat or goblins or kobolds that's a big basically yeah, I, I, to choose I, I, from. <laughs> it, it's 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 the big it's, it's, is it the big three i don't know but either yeah. way like i thought me personally i thought it was a very classic way to start us i think a little more railroady than the last one but still a really good way to get us together yeah Maybe. my first ever my first ever character was killed by rats i mean back there on <laughs> one e when you have a magic user you got one d4 hit points <laughs> i think he went into the sewers with three hit points and Got hit by a swarm of rats and he was done. Nice. Sounds that familiar. was it. Sounds familiar. Manny, were you gonna say something? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, the the rats thing really reminded me about like I don't know, like playing like RPGs as a kid and like, you know, all the first missions are always like sewer rats and stuff like that. I don't know. It felt like right, a good yeah, go it, gophers it, in the garden, huh? <laughs> yeah, it it, it 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 felt nice. It felt like you know, really starting uh, starting point for like a, an RPG, like for a, you know, D and D party. Um, it was fun. Nice. And I know Bo, you had talked about you are still trying to figure out why a turtle monk would have been put in jail, uh, even in the player video, and then again um, at the beginning. Were you able to kind of work that out at all, or did you just kind of? Say, yeah, here I am. No, I, <clears throat> I wish I would have been able to role play it a little bit better. Um, I didn't really have. I was trying to think of a logical reason for why a monk would be traveling with this band of adventurers or even accept the job to begin with. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could think of now afterwards is uh, like, as I started to play the character more, I started to feel him out a little more, you know. Um, I, I wanted him to just kind of be someone who is all about learning more because his whole life he kind of grew up in the sewers and now he had been 
let out, even though he got put right back in immediately. But I think it would have been interesting for him to just kind of see life above ground and try to take it in day by day. And like, I think it would have been interesting for him to just interact with things that people see on the day to day basis that he might never have seen before. It would have been fun to role play it like that. Now, in, in that character creation, I don't think I did, but did I give any hints as that you'd be going into the sewers, or does that just happen to be? No, I actually, I think in in campaign one, didn't it, or in episode one, didn't you say that we were going into the sewers? You might have hinted at that. Oh, actually, okay, maybe I did. Aaron, okay, yeah. I, I, no, that was not, I was just that thinking. Was, that was the day of. Come on, come on. Okay. Remember, because Sam gave me a hard time about getting my ring of water walking because I hadn't selected Well, because he chose it after we went into the sewers. Well, I like, found out we're going into the sewers no, no, to get no, the no, ring you, of water walking, man. You, so didn't I don't know that. you didn't know that until we were in the sewers, you metagamer. So, so with <laughs> so that, that, when I gave, when I gave you all character creation, um, what uh, magic items did you end up picking? So, Chuck, since you already said it, you got the ring of water walking, right? Was that before or after you knew where you were going? After. It was after. That's I mean, right. You were the last that, one that to makes, pick, I think. Cause, cause, yeah, yeah, I was because we rolled for him, and I was busy all week, and so it was like an hour before the show that I went in, and you had discussed it on Discord and said something about the sewers, and so I'm thinking, man, I I wouldn't want to walk in that shitty water, so <laughs> why not get something where I can walk on water? And so I, I, that's what I selected was the ring of water walking, and it came in handy. That was right. And then I think you know? Sam and Bo, you you two ended up rolling for which uh, magic item you guys got, right? Yeah, I ended up getting the uh, rare, if I remember correctly. Or was yeah. it there? And I ended up going with the winged boots. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most broken items in the game. I mean, <laughs> shit. Oh, it's really much. coming handy in the sewers, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, all uh, today at work, I was sitting there and I was like, man. I should have just flew up. That that <laughs> this cube wouldn't have been able to catch me. I should have just flew straight up. <laughs> I also love how instead of like using your actual movement, you just like would just like go into a hover, hover to the guy, and just like go through and kick every time. You're just like I had these boots and I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna use them. I paid good yeah. money for these boots. They're gonna get their money's worth. <laughs> but when I rolled, I rolled I think just um an uncommon, mm -hmm. and I. I do remember back now that you did mention they were going into sewers, but when I was looking on it, I felt like, what can I add to the character to, you know, like, maybe if we ran into it, be helpful, and I chose the Ring of, of ring of um, Swimming, I think? I think it's the yeah. name. Either way, it gives, it gives you, like, a, it gives you a 40-foot swim speed, doesn't require a two any of that, so not, like, in matter at such a low level, but, I don't know, I just thought to myself, like, hey, especially, like, based on our own campaign, the one thing I wish is just, like, if my character had a swim speed, these last big boss fights would have been so much help, more helpful against, like, the Ablet and stuff. Right. Yeah, so see, I what got... Like... Sorry, Sam. Oh, no, you go. I'm you go. What, what got me with... Which, uh, which I'm having a time adjusting to with our format is I'm finding I'm getting attached to my characters. And, like, Radimus here, and it never came out in the show, but Radimus was a changeling. And I never got to display really too much how he, you know, I, I tried to go for somebody with, with like identity issues that maybe would keep shifting to different people throughout different events, what was going on, but we didn't really get a lot of opportunity with that. So that might be something later on, you know, in a longer campaign, I might try that, that race again. And I know that's one thing I plan on doing is right now, these first two episodes are very railroady combat heavy. And as we, especially episode three, you guys are going to be playing level 13 characters, so there's a lot more to play with. And so I plan on giving you the opportunity to do a little bit more of that RP, having a little more interaction with sentient creatures. Uh, you, this one was pretty much beasts and oozes. You can't really do a whole lot. Yeah. But the half-orc we'll talk about a little later, so there was a, a small opportunity. But with that, Manny, uh, so you played the rogue. And in our our group's normal campaign, uh, I've got a adapted flanking rule system where you guys pretty much get flanking almost all the time. And so we Chuck, abuse it. right? So Chuck, who <laughs> plays our rogue in that one, uses backstab all the time. So Manny in this one, where you didn't get advantage as much as you're used to seeing, how did that play in? With because I think you only got backstab once, right? I think I think on like one or two rolls. Right. And I was like, oh! <laughs> you were very ha you were very excited. It was very nice to see your face light up. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So did that play uh, into your tactics at all as you played that rogue? You know, I feel like it was very apparent to everyone that I realized uh, all the rogue's abilities in the last fight. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, think yeah. Think about it with the with the rogue for the sneak attack. I mean, there's a lot of movement skills, but at at second level you don't have much. Mm -hmm. You you know. So I mean, you can't hide instantly and then pop up behind somebody and stab them. You Actually, know? at level so two much you can. At level two. No, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Level two, you get disengage as a bonus action. Yeah, you, you know? get on you yeah. un, get you get on canny movement, so you get the disengage yeah. and hide as a bonus. So, so you could do. He that. he had it, but like he was he Maddie's was doing that in the last with. fight. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah. like you said too, though, man, you said uh, that Sean, you built him more as like a a deceptive character anyway. Very. Social. Yeah, we see we had teased on that because man, uh, Manny had asked me a little bit about it, and I reminded him of that movie Entrapment with Sean Connery. And so he sort of based his character on that, you know, an old silver-haired. He, really he, he wasn't supposed to go in there just like... I normally know movies. So <laughs> that one I... Let me, let me look this up. Oh. No, everyone's, everyone's just like blanking on it. Like, Dude, I, I Catherine Zeta-Jones is in it, man. It's like one uh, of the yeah, most I mean, pleasing females on the planet. And, so and Sean Connery. To, that's going to be our new thing is every episode we're going to have a movie. We're going to need someone to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so for the three of you guys out there because we gained one from us week, stay tuned that's right all right so you went into the sewers you got your torches and so in this one uh dark vision became a little bit of an issue in our normal campaign all of your characters have dark vision so we barely have to deal with this and that's probably my issue as a dm is not restricting dark vision as much as i should but with our map in this one, entering this dungeon where you couldn't see as well and you had to use a torch, how did that play into your tactics into exploring this sewer? Well, when you put a lamp behind a trap door, Aaron, it plays into it. <laughs> that was crazy. I was <laughs> expecting that. Yeah, that, that, was, that was actually perfect. It's like the door we could have avoided, but the lantern, of course, you would have gone for it. They're just like, do I want a torch or do I want a nice lantern? You know? That's right. Um, I just don't know who would have trap the lantern the same I people was... that are feeding the cube <laughs> i know because <laughs> towards the end i realized that i was like these people have to be this is a part of their plan yes it has to be yeah they you have to oh. listen to the end of the episodes to get that full plan i didn't i didn't i didn't uh ever assume at one point during the actual game that it was a slime i yeah. didn't all right well so first let's talk about our first combat so Walking into that room with the the rats and the giant spider, uh, Sam, you wanted to discuss that. Oh, I was gonna say, did we did we actually answer your last question though about the light? Because I don't think we did. Uh, just I think we went rolling in and going straight for that lantern was fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I um, really don't think that dark vision I, affected the game as much as. What no, I, I, no, I, I mean I think it did. Yeah, we you know if if you would have been a little stricter maybe on, you know if you got a shield and a sword. And you're holding a torch. I mean, there's a problem, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, and that, and well, no, I understand. But also, if you're holding the torch and you're fighting, you could maybe do a fumble rule. You know, roll a dexterity save and see if you drop the torch. You know, you know. I mean, the torch might go out. You drop it. We're in the sewers. Everything's I, wet. I think if we were playing straight homebrew, I probably would have done that. But since it's just rules as written, there isn't really a fumble table for that kind of thing. So as long as you had two hands, I think rules as written, it just plays in that way. But yeah, I, I agree. If In real life, if you're fighting with a flaming object in one hand and your sword in the other, there's going to be a chance someone's going to get burned that you don't intend or something. <laughs> yeah, even, your, even yourself. But um, I was actually going to go into that like... I didn't make the character for this, just I've played as like halflings, a halfling rogue before, and I found out that like dark vision and like the lack of it was just really detrimental to like trying to sneak around. So like when I was making the bard and I saw like some of the cantrips, I was thinking like light would be perfect in case we do have to do anything dark and like dungeon delvey type. And so I thought that was a really good way to like keep my hands free from my handy dandy banjo, mm -hmm. and then also to like but and then still have some light. But I thought it made us definitely more cautious instead of just running through because since we couldn't see the whole length of the hallway especially right. going into like your next question with the first fight we didn't even know the big spider was there because it was completely in darkness until it finally jumped out and like bit radimus or sean right. like that that was great 
Right. See, I had considered kind of bucking the system just a little bit with with the wild shape. I could have turned into a cat, and cats see in the dark just fine. Actually, five E cats but don't have do dark not. vision. But and we'll <laughs> see that. I, I thought about researching that and seeing, but but I I wanted to stick with the spirit. You know, I mean, you told us <laughs> we didn't want us to have dark vision, so I intentionally did not research anything that could could have dark vision so that I could cheat. Good. Good job. Uh, no. So on, on that first uh, fight, though, I will say, old, I'm learning. like, I already recorded my DM after action cam- uh, video. And so in that, I talk about how you guys surprised me on this first fight. I was not expecting you to try and run from the spider. <laughs> I okay. Well, and literally, we, we the second after I twice. did that, I was like, "Why did I do that?" Because I you, love, I love that. Oh, you sorry, mentioned oh, earlier railroading, and so it oh, might be appropriate. Or if not, you can oh. cut it out. So dramatic yeah, yeah. pause in case we got to cut. <laughs> I was ah, thinking the okay. same Okay. Yeah. Like, one of the first things you told us is no, because we tried to yeah, escape the sewers exactly. right off the bat. <laughs> so when that happened, and you're like, and then nope, Chuck was like, nope. get out. <laughs> one at a time, guys. For the subtitles. I'm not subtitling these. Don't worry. Okay. Um, no, but Chuck, wings, I agree. Wings, I felt wings, the wings, same wings. way because he told us that shit, and then literally we got into that fucking room, and then like two minutes later, I was like, "You were like, get away from the spider." I was like, "All right, let's get away from the spider." And then I was like, "Damn it, damn it, damn it!" But I was <laughs> looking, thinking just to like, because I was like, "Man, it's four on one. We can take it." And then you guys were like, "Let's dip." I was like, I, "Let's, let's go." And, that, that's and, funny. Oh, and what was with this wait. little jackass locking me in the goddamn room? I'm getting to that. I, I was, right, Yeah, I, I get one, to that. One, I found it funny that Sean was the one who ran first and dipped. I thought that was funny, especially when Betty's like, I didn't know we were running. And he was like, I get the hell out of there. And then I was just like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going by him. So I'm gonna like, I'm gonna vicious mockery him, which, which when we get to that later, it came in very handy. Like, and I took, I took the opportunity attack and I got out there and I just thought for shits and gigs, because my character, I wish I played out more. It's very much a, a lover, not a fighter. Very cowardly, though. I did. I had some times when I was fighting with my rapier. Um, I I wish I didn't. So I got out of the room and I just locked it. And I was all ready to be like, Sean, they're dead. Let's go. And I was I was I was ready to play that. They're dead to us. Well, but they, they, they and and when you guys did that, I'm sitting here as a DM. I'm like, okay, I've figured these encounters out to the exact math they're supposed to be. This was a medium encounter. It wasn't even a hard encounter. And so you guys ran like, oh, what do I do? Well, the spider is going to try and go after the food. And it just so happened you rolled terribly. I rolled great. And he was going to break down the door. But if it had been the other way around and when uh, Dante had been able to hold that door closed and the spider didn't break through, I probably would have been like, okay, the spider's motivation is food. It's got some dead rats there it can eat on. So it probably would have tried one round to break through the door, and then it would have gone back into its corner and left. Because like that, right, that's well, see, reasonable. And and also, you know, I started this game in one e, and I think people have lost the idea that running is a viable option in D and D. I mean, there there are a lot of times you will die, so just run. And I mean, we've had running fights before. You know, where we're running, trying to climb up mountains and scramble over rocks and stop and hack and slash, disengage, run, you know, and and being pursued. Sometimes you don't want to stand and fight. You want to just get the hell out of there and get away from this, you know, and yeah. uh, that big old monstrous spider. And I mean, it's got poison and it, no, they, you know, we just weren't ready for all that. <laughs> it, 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 but it you, almost, you it managed it to get it, though. That, yeah, it almost downed Sean in like one go. And I was like, oh. <laughs> All right, so then you guys made it out of there, and our infamous lantern trap uh, got Sean. Uh, that worked beautifully. And if you had not made your save, that would have swung around and trapped you against the wall as well. But you made your save yes. and, and only took half damage. I would have like died like outright. How <laughs> much damage was it? I only have like eleven hit points. Uh, it was like I'd, I'd have to look. I, I think was, you ended up like, taking like six or seven, so I think I'd okay. roll a, a thirteen or something. It was like three d ten. Yeah. So okay. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Well, it felt like a lot more. And so actually, <laughs> because like of that, more. I made the next part of your encounter a little bit easier than I was planning on, because I was like, "Ooh, that almost killed Sean. I better take take it a little easy." Because traps aren't uh, added into your adventuring day. And so any trap that I add 
is not in that mathematical calculation for adventuring day. So I was like, ah, I better be careful. It's so like shits and gigs. Right. So then yeah. you went down that hallway and that's where the room where you're having trouble breathing was. Um, and so that I'm curious, do any of you know what, uh, I don't know if it's a sci- the scientific principle or scientific thing that happens in enclosed spaces uh, with no ventilation, what that is. There's no oxygen. So it, carbon, yeah. carbon dioxide. Right, so it's, it's gas stratification. Like all of the gases come down and displace the oxygen up and take over so it's hard to breathe. Random shit you learn being a deep dungeon master. <laughs> this is one of them that I did not know until I was like, what are hazards in enclosed spaces? And I found that one. So the like idea, that. so the idea was, is you would go in there, and then if you had failed your your first con save, would have given you the idea, okay, something's wrong here. The second time, something. Check if, time out. I apologize, yeah. but before we get too far away from that confined spaces, okay. I spent some years working in underground utilities and such. Mm-hmm. You know, ventilating manholes and things of that nature. And then also, you consider we were in the sewers, and there's such a thing as called methane gas that's created by by feces and without ventilation it's even without being in a sewer it's not uncommon for for underground spaces to fill up with methane gas Mm -hmm. you know i mean manholes if you don't ventilate them you can drop in there and you pass out right away two seconds you're out cold you know and so you have to blow them out for 20 minutes before you can get in them so it's very possible for future reference you're underground somebody coming along and they have to use torches to see and there's going to be a spot right in there where the methane level and the oxygen level are just right. <laughs> you know? Come and it could, it could ignite. <laughs> and, I mean, you might be throwing around 8D10 eight D, eight D to everybody. That's right. There's a you fireball know, in that, just in that sitting situation. there. Uh, yeah, I had, exactly. I had, I had something like that, not, like, specifically like this, but, like, a potential, like, fire hazard blow up in my in one of my in my last apartment that was very similar to that someone had left the um we, we had a gas stove and someone left it on the gas on just a little bit all night so when you uh. got there it smelled very much like propane and so to turn off the burner you go by the sparker i did it I, and i shit you not it only clicked once i felt every hair in my body get singed <laughs> like it just all over me was just this singe like something had happened and i was like i don't like that and yeah. I was I was very mad because I was just like I'm gonna die, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like if this catches, I am dead. It was like a it was getting into my room too. Right, and, and I remember. I, closed. So I was reading how pointless, deadly that point, was. Pointless and... information that's very cool. While yeah. we're on that gas subject, okay. I don't know if you guys are. Aaron might be aware of this, but when they fix a gas leak, you know, the the pipes break, they have to weld them. Yeah. What they do is really cool. Okay, because you have to have the exact mixture of, of like natural gas and oxygen for it to combust. So they put a tent over the pipe and then they fill the tent completely full of natural gas. And then a guy goes in with a breathing apparatus and welds it in complete natural gas in an oxygen free atmosphere. That's you know, which is really is really kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, but you forgot to ask I guess the question. You can is this a out. science show or is this a D&D show, Chuck? <laughs> Yeah, nerds are nerds, dude. It's a crossover <laughs> right here. It is a crossover. I love, I love that information. I love science facts. You can yes. learn and like, have fun. Like in our main campaign, when I had to look up how fast a human can dig a tunnel with bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so the idea was that if you'd failed the second constitution saving throw, you would have taken one level of exhaustion. And then the third one, uh, you would have gone down... Uh, all my notes are in the campaign. Uh, but eventually, I think it was like six saving throws, you would have died. But I was like, you know what? They're probably just going to hold their breath, especially once I found out there was a turtle on here who can hold his breath forever. Um, I was like, okay, if we do that, then the gases start getting into the mucous membranes and you still, you, know, you just delay the effects by around. But I decided to hold off on that since uh, Sean got so uh, hit pretty hard with that uh, <laughs> that trap. So, all right. So there you decided then not to go for those doors and go back to the main hallway and go down to the lower map where uh, you jumped over the sewer line and the crocodile came out. So, uh, Dante, tell us about what were your thoughts on that fight when that crocodile came out of the water? I saw that crocodile come out of the water and I just started thinking, man, if only I had some magic boots that could help me fly over this water. But then, you being a good DM, 
you were like, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to snip at your ankles anyway. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty well done. I mean, you could have just let me fly right over it, but I don't know. <laughs> you on the fly, not just wanted to let me fly right over every situation. We're like, okay, well, and, and, and snip at your ankles anyway. That's why I let you do it the first time. So that I could, like, all right, let me get uh, Zinga's <laughs> Flinmo over there so he's alone. Flinmo and then got I'll get you on the up, way back. Okay. Flinmo got <laughs> fucked up in that fight. And I think it was because of the investigator joke that I do not regret. Okay. <laughs> that was just too good. So then in that fight, that's when we had lots of the beasts uh, come in and attack. And yeah, the swarms really got Flinmo. Um, but Chuck, I think Radimus was able to turn into that bear. So Chuck, yeah, I was the bear since the spider. Yeah, because right. I turned into the bear to, to get to back off the spider. That's right. And I had my water walking boots, so I was able to stand on the on the sewage. Well, okay, um, that's another thing, Aaron. Yeah. I actually, that's something that going forward. I mean, you might be able to pause this or whatever, but uh, wild shape. When you wild shape, I mean, it's it's up to your discretion basically to decide like what objects. Or well, I guess it's on a, like on a what druid, objects a, you're a wearing. Druid keeps keeps their equipment. Bonuses. Yeah, you choose. It either all yeah, melds it's, into it's, you it's, it's, or it falls to the floor. Okay, I think. So then the boots say, would yeah. meld. Yeah. Huh? You're trying to say like if he still had the benefits of the ring of water walking in bear form, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what. He's so, trying to say, but yeah. I'm saying like the ring then would have been big enough. I guess it, this is a blends, question for next week's session. Blends, so yeah, it's a question for next week's session. No, that's all right because it's not a because uh, I I play a moon druid in the campaign I'm a player in, and and so when you meld the it doesn't say that you know it's not a bear wearing a ring. Um, this is the the items transform with you, and so you just look like a bear as you've transformed. Because otherwise, okay. if you were wearing a funny headdress and you've Moon, you transformed into a spider, then you'd be a spider with a funny headdress or something. Well, that, that's actually right. the point because because I'm also thinking like, what if like you have a ring of telekinesis, you know, very rare magic item? Would that mean he would have been like, you know, a Jedi bear, just like you know, doing telekinesis shit in bear form? Even um, not until you get a higher level. I mean, because at low level you can't do your spells and stuff. But when when they, I think when the moon druid gets to like level sixteen or something. Mm -hmm. Then they can they can use all their magic and everything. I mean, in, you, you, in wild you, with shape. A, with a moon druid, you can use spell slots to heal yourself, but that's about it. Right. You, but you still have item uses, and so and you keep your intelligence. So okay. The viewers may do, I'll double check after this to make sure I'm right. But right now, so Bo for the future, if you play a a future druid that can transform, I would say yes. You keep your magic item things that. Uh, have effects like that like if you had a the staff of healing you would not be able to use the healing spell slots from that staff but you'd still get any bonuses that may apply but i'll double check we're gonna get blown up in the comments <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers i'm kidding now um yeah unless so. do you do you have you seen that played differently me um i haven't played with many like with many druids so like I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, yeah, because I because like Bo has a valid point. Like I don't know if that's like all right or not. Because I, yeah, like, well, yeah, you can like yeah, you that. lose. I mean, when you think about it, you lose the benefit. Like I know this is off the wall, but if I were wearing plus three plate mail and had a twenty one AC, yeah, your AC my would AC that would revert bear. to that of the that, bear. That's so I would because lose your the physical of that armor. That's because your physical characteristics do change in wild shape. That's something. That's something we'll like look up because like right. some stuff will work or right. some stuff won't work. Potentially some stuff will, but right. so in this case, I ruled you were let you were able yeah. to be on the water. So and that's what yeah. it comes and down. It, to. And at it at worked out day, really well. No, yeah, and that and that's what it comes down to because at the end of the day, like yeah, there's the rules is written, but like if there's something up there, the D it's the DM's game and he can choose the rules he want to fucking put in there. You know. So, you know what? Like, maybe it's like Hulk shorts. You know, I mean Bruce Banner shorts aren't that damn. They retcon that. They're stretchy. <laughs> okay, and, and what? Are you talking about the the one with Edward Norton that they made in like okay, 2008? Okay, first of all, 2008 one is highly under under. I agree. Okay? I agree. I agree. I yeah, agree with that. Yeah, it's, this, it's unrated. This this channel is pro Edward Norton. 
Okay, <laughs> that is moving we'll on. Die on that, we'll die on that fucking hill. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we came to the large locked door uh, where when I was going through and checking and bleeping out your uh, uh, non-family-friendly language for the episode, I was like, okay, they're that making fun of Sean for sticking it in the hole the first time. I was like, do I leave the... <laughs> that was that was all Chuck. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Was no, no, Chuck. come on. I don't even remember that. Exactly. Yeah, you'll see it because I, I, mean, I, I ended up, ended up leaving it. Age, huh? It was innuendo <laughs> yeah, enough that uh, I think we're okay. <laughs> but I was like, okay. Uh, so you found the locked door. So then you realized you had to go check another part of the sewer. And... And this one, you decided to go north. If you'd gone south, you would have been able to come up through and sneak up on that half ogre's layer, because there was a um, a U-shaped sewer track that you could have swam through, and he had two uh, burning uh, uh, things to keep the ooze from coming into that section, because there was no door. So that would have given you a clue as to okay, why are these burning uh, braziers here? Or brazier. <laughs> I cannot get that word right. <laughs> I I've said that before. Tomato, tomato. Uh, tomato braziers. Uh, I was actually that. waiting for it. Are we going to bust that with the braziers again? Yeah, I know. <laughs> God. Anyway, so the. Wait, does it really matter how you say it? Yes. A, yeah. a brazier is. A like... brazier oh, that holds okay, up okay, pitch. Okay, actually, yeah. okay, now, now I understand. Now See, I, I was understand trying to be. I was trying to be modest this. about it, and Chuck is like full blown. That's no, right. it took me a second. Now I realize. Okay, sorry. but anyway, you went through the front <laughs> entrance to the half ogre's lair. So there you started to see signs of habitation and life. What were you guys thinking as you checked that area out? Like with the mushroom? No, before I that, the, thinking... the door before Sean fell in, almost fell into the hole. There was the, the water urn there. There was the where they were oh, feeding. Oh, yeah. Where I, they were I... feeding them rats, right? Where the rats were. That was talking about where we checked in with the guards. Well, no, no. When we first came oh, up in the ogre's place, that was and see, yeah. I thought that you know, I mean, underground in a sewer, there'd have to be a, a staging area, you know, where they kept supplies for repairs and things of that nature. Um, you know, the work crew where they yeah. came down, and and so I, that's kind of what I thought it was. I, 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 mean, I thought it was like a maintenance hub where, like, the sewer workers were like Chuck saying exactly because they had like something to wash up. They had like a table. They had supplies. We didn't know what was behind that door. That could have been like a living, uh, like a makeshift living quarters if they had to be down there for like multiple shifts. And I, I mean, guess I just have an active imagination. I'm sorry. Or you're just dumb. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> He's an MBA. Hey, I'm an MBA. <laughs> when I'm exactly. a BMA, exactly. no, I'm a BMA. Never mind. No one's a master's here, I think. All right. So then, and Sean, did you expect there to be a uh, trap there? I didn't. <laughs> I, we opened the door. We used the thief stools. Saw the lantern. Great. This is my reward for opening the door stealthily. A javelin to the heart. <laughs> well, you Are you talking about the You didn't the even make it to the door. I was, where I was floating over? No, and the, pit and trap, the right? ogre threw the oh, spear the pit at trap. me? Yes. No, I, was, I wasn't even jerk. expecting that either. I was not either. And I opened that up, and that that put me down so much. I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's very really hard. Hit. Somebody, uh, let's. Uh, I closed the door. I was like, "All right, let's get out of here." They we do got, not want us going through there. We got <laughs> to yeah, so you guys got to. You guys got to read the room. I mean, we've been playing with this Literally. guy for a long time, <laughs> and and how many times has he gotten frustrated in our main campaign when we roll up on a situation, and Evan Dill yells out, "Okay, guys, don't step on that rug." A pit trap is like the oldest thing in the book, man. It's you know you, you got to look for it. Yeah, but you didn't have boots of uh, you didn't have wing boots, no, did you? I wanted no. to fly over the pit. So yeah, that's all right. You're learning. So then, <laughs> then you ended up talking with the half ogre, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Instead of I was fighting. not expecting that. Right. So, I mean, he seemed yeah. pretty. He seemed pretty harmless. He was like, "What are you doing in my swamp?" And we we're just like, "Hey." I'm gonna be honest though. Had he not hit me with that javelin and done me in as much as he did, I think I think I would have. We would have stayed hostile. Oh, really? Even, even well, after, I don't know. I, I shut that after, door, and I was like, we were done. What's even, af even after the talking? No, like, no, 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 no. I'm yeah, saying okay. before the talk. I feel like... Oh, okay. He did He did throw first, save yeah. it later. But yeah. like, even as he started talking, I was just like, okay. 
Maybe maybe this guy. Yeah, like even when it comes down to it, it's like yeah, this is his home and shit. I mean, I hope I wish I did a better persuasion role and persuaded him to come fight with us. I oh, that dude, was really I was not funny. expecting you to do that. I was like, this is gonna screw up my bath again. <laughs> And so I was, ruin everything. And so I was thinking, it, I, I said this in my after DM video too. I was like, if you had rolled a natural twenty, I would have been like, okay, he and he would have followed you. But the second that ooze was there, he would have been out. And, well, that's the thing. He would if he dipped. Yep. The way would have been blocked because he blocked the entrance before the ooze came. I controlled it being blocked, so it would have happened as he ran out or something. <laughs> Aaron's like, I am God. I I, I, that's I right. <laughs> right. It would have became the ogre's fault. He would have stumbled on his way out on a lever on the, close to the wall. And Ooh. when he tricked the lever, the stones fell out of the, the top of the, the passage. Well, I was, I'm, I'm, either way, I'm happy I kept you on your toes, Aaron. Yes. So the one thing I wish we had done, which I, I want to do in our future episodes, is I wish we would have, like uh, Chuck was saying, start to use the ability to use some of the more social aspects of our characters is, and I thought about it too late was during that short rest there, we should have RP a little bit and I, I should have had him talk to you guys and, and done a little bit there. So I'm going to try and do that more in the future because our, for the listeners out there, our group is very combat oriented. We do a little bit of role play. So we're, we're going to try and work on that a little bit more. So Sam, yeah, it, feel free it, it, to it thing, engage. The thing me. is, it messes in with the with the time constraints. That's true too. You know, yes. we don't want to do a six hour video for a one shot. But, you but know, even, I mean, even a, even a, even on top of that, you're not wrong. We do have this constraints, but even on top of that, what what do we come up to? Like three, three and a half hours on this. That session? ended up being right about three ten. Yeah, we could have we could have done like maybe like twenty minutes or something, like little little bit of banter back and forth. I think you're right. See, did any did anybody did any anybody here want to listen to twenty more minutes of Flynn Moe's jokes? (laughs) Um, let the let the in the comments let us know. Put a poll, (laughs) okay? All right, so moving to our you got the key from the ogre, went down, unlocked the door. Uh, in and I was actually expecting the. Uh, the room, the empty room there before the final fight for you guys to do a short rest there, but it just felt right based on your persuasion role to let you do that in the ogre's lair. Yeah, you um, adapted to the scenario and you went right. forward. Every a tool every DM needs to know, like how because I thought that fit more, you know. Yes, I agree. We also bartered with him. We gave him some fresh food. That's right. <laughs> yeah, some. I some of his mushrooms. He'll never know. We should have probably fed him, fed him the halfling. What is up with you always trying to feed my carrot? This is like the second <laughs> week in a row. You understand this shit, right? He's always trying to barter. Like, hey, take him. Hey, he take our big um dwarf. Hey, take our yeah, our big jumbo big... dwarf, right? They're, they're crunchy with ketchup. Yeah, this is unifying <laughs> theme through all of these episodes, maybe. That he's a dick towards me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so been going doing to that our for a year and a half. Going to our yeah. final fight here. Uh, who, uh, Dante, you, did you end up opening that door that the ooze was in? Is that how you got stuck there, or was that Sean? That was Sean. me. That was Sean. That was me. Sean and I ran up there. I, I think I held, or I was just behind him because, yeah. I don't know, going through that sewer, he was kind of getting beat up here and there, being an older man. I figured I helped the elderly out, even though I was the oldest of the party, thinking about it being a turtle. Kind of reminded you of Master <laughs> Splinter a little bit, the way he had that little hitch in his giddy-up. A little bit, a little uh, bit. So before we Why? get into that actual fight, Sam, you said you and Chuck had a question for me. Oh, well, um, this was out of like, are we going to, like, not get into the fact that, like, I made a perfectly good ooze reference when Dante's death that got no laughs when now everyone's making, like, fucking TMNT jokes now? You guys are all oh. hypocrites, okay? That's all I want to say. Oh, okay. yeah. I think those, those 90s movies, Sam, I'm not going to lie, they're just, honestly, they're yes. two, three years before my time. The Ninja Turtles. I've and, seen them. Th- that was my time, and I've forgotten what happened when I was that old, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, You're I, just I, a nerd, <laughs> Sam. You're just a nerd. <laughs> I was oh, dude, Raphael was the shit. I was, I was so man. shocked. I mean, I remember in the first, I think it was the first TMNT, and Casey shows up, Casey Jones, right? And he's trying to fight with Raph, and Raph looks down, and he's like, is that a Jose Canseco bat? Dude, I hope you didn't pay money for that. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious, man. TMNT was, like, big. They had, like, a Broadway, like, musical show and everything. Oh, but yeah. Um, que- uh, yeah, a question that we had for you, like, Chuck and I, after we had a good 
ferocious, not ferocious. We had a good debate last week on, and I believe I think after like Chuck definitely did persuade me a bit that his way's right when it came to when it comes to like challenge ratings and how you set up these fights. You always say like it's a medium, an easy, a hard, or a deadly encounter. Are all of those like different variations of like a CR2 encounter? Or when you say deadly, that means the CR is more than like what our party can withstand, like a CR3, like Chuck mentioned. Right. So those, so, so I'll just kind of tell you guys how I do it. Because for the listeners, these guys have not seen my DM videos where I do explain this. Um, but just real quick, so you guys know, in D&D Beyond, I use the encounter builder. And so I put in four level whatever PCs, and that tells me how much XP I have to work with for an adventuring day. So then I take that XP and I distribute it among the encounters. So in our right, first... Right, and that's based on, the, based on the charts in the DM's guide, right? Correct. And so in the first one, I distributed that through three encounters. This one, I was like, all right, let's see what happens with four encounters. And so in episode one, it was hard, hard, deadly. In this one, it was medium, medium. The Actually, the half-ogre fight was supposed to be hard, but you didn't actually fully complete that. You only got half of that with the rats and then the one hit from the half-ogre. And then the gelatinous cube was a hard. So this one was supposed to be two mediums, two hards. And if you go in the encounter builder, I'd, I'd have to look it up, and I don't want to do that while we're here on the video, but a deadly encounter... Um, there's a certain threshold when you put together these encounters and deadly means there's a very high chance that one of the characters will die. A hard encounter is there's a moderate chance that the characters will die and medium is there's like a low chance that characters will die. Yeah. But yeah. On, right. So and a go, base, so, a so base. Go, so going through that, so going through that before mm -hmm. for, sorry to interrupt Chuck. So going through that, when you put it in, you still put in that you had four level two characters to work with, correct? Yep. So, by the DM's guide, it was a CR2 deadly encounter. No, because if it's just the CR2 yeah. in there, I think that goes to... Um, a moderate all it, the way across. It, huh? Right, it's, it's, it's either moderate or just barely right. hard. Because then okay. when you start adding creatures... Not only are you adding the XP, but for every if you add one if two creatures, you have to multiply the XP by one and a half. Okay, Three, okay. four, and I think five, you have to double the XP as well. Because you had the rats. Right. And so okay. that's so why Chuck's, I added Chuck one. Was rat. Right. And so Chuck was right in our argument. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. It was it's just semantics because I call it an encounter rating, raising the CR of the encounter. You know, it, when really you know, it's, it's the it's, XP in this scenario yeah it's it's the same thing it's the same concept it's just different right and i, I did not want to do different yeah. concept that's and ba based on what i've seen with the, the D, D podcasts and shows that i've watched and my experience playing with you guys is uh number of actions beats less number of actions and so four pcs versus one bad guy the four pcs are going to win every time and so you've got to get a few more actions taken. That's why legendary creatures are okay, because they have those legendary actions to and get little, those in there. And right. then layer on top of that. Oh. Right. And so that yeah. that's what brings that up. So I think if I went back, I would have had you just fight that white dragon and not the two cultists, because the layer action and the legendary brought that up. And so yeah. this is learning for me and the DMs out there. Um, We're one for one. Right. So next time I'm going to try and see if I can get all the actions even, but uh, we'll kind of see. So Good to know, okay. But with that fight, uh, that gelatinous cube, uh, Dante, you had the uh, closest encounter with it. Um, how, how was that? You said afterwards you wish you would have used the boots of flying to go up instead of out, right? Yeah, I wish I would have done that, yeah, in hindsight. Yeah, and I, But, I um... I don't know. I've fought gelatinous cubes in D and D before, and I fought in them in in games. I never realized how dangerous they were until <laughs> I uh, got, got caught up right there. <laughs> when, you're, when you're level two, they're pretty damn dangerous. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> in oh. my face. Yeah, Bo, you've clearly never fought them in Baldur's Gate, where yeah. they're magic resistant and they no, do a shit that, ton of damage. That was pretty. Uh, yeah, when you start your turn inside of one, that that's what did it. That was a. Could, well, yeah, and the reason they're so deadly in dungeons, I mean, imagine if we would have come through a door in a hallway and somehow a trap or whatever, the door locks behind us and we turn and look and coming down this 10 by 10 square hallway is a gelatinous cube. 
and it's just ever getting closer. There is nowhere to go. The only option you have is to kill it before it engulfs you, and that's it. And in that case, most likely a level two party, they're all dead. Yeah, there's really no way yeah, around you're, it. You're getting smushed. See, that's what I want to try one time is the, the Indiana Jones with the ball rolling, and then you have to run out, and then put a cube <laughs> right there when you have to run out, and everyone just runs into it. Oh, perfect. That would be a little. I don't weird. know. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Pixar's Onward. Mm-hmm. They have a scene. Yeah, it is a gelatinous cube. Yeah. They have a scene just like that where it's it's coming down the hallway and they're running away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I liked how D and D that was. I liked how D and D that was. There Very were like much. so many references. Oh, I watched. That's the one where the brother with the van, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the a brother, great movie. The brother I mean, with the van. Yeah, the older brother was a goofball, you know, and everything, and like the young elf kid, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so to our viewers out there, if you get an opportunity to see Onward definitely do it it's great movie of the night we, we, the are, night. we, we are in no way supported or advertising pixar or disney <laughs> plus but we just like the movie That's but right. you, you, had a, you, you had a question before we aired did you did i did someone yeah i think for me uh you're gonna have to remind me if you're cueing me um yeah well yeah well you had questions you wanted to ask each of us and then you got to mind but then we went on our onward rant you oh uh that was the I'll, I'll just oh yeah, that's one. right. This, uh, oh, the the thank you. Uh, so <laughs> I swear this is my first one. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the vicious mockery at the end that was like all you had. So would you have built your character different in hindsight? Honestly, the way I built Flynnmo, I built him exactly how I wanted to. It just came down to the second the second encounter when we got ambushed by the swarm of rats. Well, Flynnmo got. I was at 1 HP at one point, so I used a lot of my inspirations. I used all of my spell slots on healing, and so at second level, I only have three spell slots. But I had Fairy Fire prepared. I had Bane prepared. Yeah, you're used to that. That works. (laughs) I had Bane prepared. Like, I had some, like, pretty good spells to, like, really help, like, take down the characters, especially in this dungeon was perfect for Flynnmo and for a bard in general because wisdom saves, every creature had like a negative wisdom score. So I was like, and you were just rolling really badly on us as well. But like also having that like negative two detriment was a giant boost, especially to get all of those vicious mockeries to work. So the way I built him was great. It's just the way the encounter went. It just comes like you can build an amazing character on paper, have amazing spells, amazing backstory. But when it comes down to the roles, the role of the dice, that's just what's going to do it. So at the end, I only had like one inspiration left and I had my rapier and like I wanted to play more of that cowardly aspect up so I didn't get even near the creature. And so I just, just played my banjo and started like spouting just grade a amazing jokes that the guard in the beginning clearly didn't understand and that's why it failed right. oh and... did you go- did you google during the during the campaign where'd you, where'd I... you find the good jokes so uh, i because you obviously I... didn't have them at the beginning of the show <laughs> that's the only <laughs> i i i um i had some i did google some i will say that but some of them during it i can't remember which ones but it didn't make up like two or three on the fly that just kind of there, went there were it. some that were very apropos that i was like did he just make that up because that's very appropriate <laughs> i will i i will let you in the alligator one i said it in the campaign the alligator one i had come across on my research nice and right when the alligator showed up i was like this is perfect it's, <laughs> i have to do this next turn and i my did time to shine <laughs> My time to shine was every time it came to my Except turn. Except it was wrong. Encounter, combat encounter. It was an alli- it, Wait, wait. Did I say Alligators alli- and crocodiles are different. I said crocodile. crocodile in my joke, and we were fighting a crocodile. No, I remember it was different. There, there was, there was a part where I think someone watch. referenced alligator. Yeah, it might have been me. Who knows? Yeah, um, I, was, so- I was on the money. But yeah, Vicious Mockery, it played more of a... It played more of a role in his character than I thought it would, but when it came down to like I used up all my spell slots, I have no bardic inspiration. It's like I'm not, and he wasn't gonna run up. Vicious Mocker was the only way to go. But I thought, especially yeah, I like, mean, it's basically the Bard's Eldritch Blast at right. that low it's, level. It's, I mean, it's it's, it's 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 like yeah, it's their it's their token cantrip to take. It's it's a lot of fun, and plus it came in handy like the the spider fight, using it to then run past and like give them disadvantage on a reaction attack. Yeah. And then he uses reaction, so then everyone could run out the door, even though I shut in their face. Right. I didn't think, I didn't plan that, but like I just used it because I didn't want to get hit personally, right? Because like I didn't want, like I didn't want to get got. Yeah. But like it, it really, it really played up, and like I just, I was just really enjoying the jokes at the end. And um, the last joke, it went over his head, which is okay, but it was like in reference to a sycamore tree. 
Uh, I, I got it. I got it. Did you? Did you yeah. though? Like, yeah. yeah. Did you? I did. <laughs> I mean, and, I um, oh, and then puns. and then and then singing terribly like that that was awesome because i was trying to make that up on the spot but then some of the jokes i would sing song it yeah but either did way you have to make it up singing terribly or did that just come naturally <laughs> i will let, the viewer, I will let I will i'm let pretty you, sure he was a natural I, for that I, role I, I will let the viewers decide that um, right. so so but, now um, that i forgot your question the... bo did you uh was there anything you could have done with monk abilities to have saved yourself or to get away from that cube more? Uh, were there any of those monk abilities you didn't get to use that you wanted to? That was uh, no, there's honestly, at level two, there's not a lot that you do get. Um, it, one thing I learned about the monk at the lower levels, uh, just looking at it, uh, it does a lot of things well. The problem about it is, is being a melee class, it just doesn't do anything it doesn't do a lot of things better than the barbarian, the fighter, the paladin, the other melee classes. I mean, it has its own niche, but it's like you don't get as many hit points as a fighter or a barbarian. You get a lot of hate in the comics and the comics. That's all right. Well. I'm willing to deal with it. <laughs> I'm saying at level two. At level two. Oh, yeah. I mean, once you get up to stunning strike. Once yeah, you, then... yeah. Once I, once I got up <laughs> no, there, I mean, it once, definitely would have got wild. But yeah, I mean, yeah, at level once... two. Yeah, they, they, a lot of people like agree. Like once you're like level five with a monk, it definitely starts really getting into its niche. Now, now point. inverse of that, Chuck with the Moon Druid, that's probably the most overpowered class at low level because you get an, a ton of hit points that you can use. Which, and a CR one, right? Beast, and you know, wild, honest, honest, crazy. Truth, I, <laughs> I, I started consciously thinking it was funny later, but I really kind of hung the party out to dry. You get. You in did, that fight, fine. because I was supposed to be the tank, you know, and I was playing him like a ranger. I'm trying to stay as far away from that dumb bitch as I can. Now, what do you mean? You, <laughs> you never know? used your cantrips. You were using your mace. I was like, what is he not using his cantrips for? What yeah, is he not I, using I his used mouth? a couple of them. He did. I mean, uh. one, I mean, once I wild shaped one. I mean, here we got this big old grizzly bear, and he's running away from the cube. Try, I was trying to put the halfling between me and the cube. You know, so I can, so I mean, you know, if he's got to eat somebody, I mean, get this guy first. Once again, it comes to this, like, just once again, honestly. But like, well, you I, just but, happened to be the one that nah, was nah. there. But we, we, you we, know, we, nah. We, so we were discussing this, like, after the after the show last week too. It's like he's like, I, like I was talking to him. It's like he had a potential of like eighty four hit points at level two as a druid ranger. Like, just in case anybody needs to know, that is OP. Le eighty four hit points is like what you are getting at like eighth level with like any class rolled or fixed. Also, on that note. I, just for viewers out there, in case like anyone is knowing, we are using fixed HP for each of our character builds. We're not rolling for HP prior. It's always just the fixed amount, the fixed averages that each class are given based off their hit die. Yeah. So, yeah, with all of that, then, uh, because of that, that's why I ended up ending the episode early, because it would have been just very boring well, had I see, locked and everyone I in and eventually just killed them with the use. <laughs> See, and then communication is important, you know, because I don't know if you guys knew this, but Aaron and I had had a conversation before the show. And I, you know, I sometimes, you know how my sense of humor is and I get forgetful. And the old, one of the reasons I picked Moon Druid was because you could see our, you could wild shape into things that are really big. And if he were to run us up against like a, an evil summoner or something, I was, I was gonna turn into a cockroach and climb up his anus and then wild shape into an elk, oh, you know, man. or a grizzly bear from his intestines. And and then I many... reminded him this was a family show. Yeah, he said I couldn't crawl up anybody's <laughs> ass, so I didn't know I what mean, to do with wild shape after you, that. You I mean, the, that... You, you, <laughs> hey, hey, Chuck, you'd be surprised how. Oh, I mean, it's not like okay. That was the one idea you had to do with Wild Shape. <laughs> yeah, and I, had to play I was gonna monk. go up to I was gonna go up to the guy and hit him with my mace or whatever, and then and then I got movement, so I was gonna turn into a cockroach and run up his leg, squeeze right up in his butt, shimmy up there past the colon, and then next turn, poof, turn into a grizzly or an elk. So there you go for you aspiring DMs out there. Always be prepared for a sphincter roll. <laughs> and it's not it's not like it's not like the like the ant like because it's, it's not like like the ant man thanos debate either which is like kind of been which i've like seen like been debunked a few times like it's not i'm not even gonna get into this it, <laughs> this this video does not need to be as long as the other one and i will just go off on a rampage all right so yes here. we've got to the end so we'll uh go around the 
uh, players here for any final uh, thoughts. Bo, anything you, any final thoughts on this one? Uh, it was a lot of fun. I do wish that uh, go, coming into it, I just had a general idea a little bit more about what I wanted my character to be. I think that this could be a, a really good way to start a campaign, especially if you have uh, newer players, because I think you know it is railroaded. But my very first campaign for a lot of people too is uh, was Lost Minds of Pend Pendel, or however you want to say it. But uh, I mean, it's obviously <laughs> very railroaded. It's it's a very railroaded campaign, but it's it's also it's really important because there's a lot of moments where like for beginning players where they might be like a little bit, I don't know, shy to like showcase their character. They don't know how their character wants to be or talk or like what they want to actually do. So I think it's a good way a lot of times to have a railroaded option. So it's like, okay, well, we might want to do all these other things right now, but at least we know that we can go do this right now. Uh, Manny and which cat is that? This is my cat Macchiato. All right, Man Manny mouse. and Macchiato, final thoughts. Uh, man, I kept thinking about how you were going to kill us, uh, <laughs> once we beat the slime. Um, and I thought, uh, I kept thinking like, okay, like we're going to beat it and then they're going to like, they're going to like drain like the, they're, they're going to like fill it up with water and we're going to drown. I was like, that's how he's going to get us. But you didn't, do, then you didn't do that. But the, the, the <laughs> black tent, but the black tendrils thing, that's what I was thinking, that it was going to come back as like a like a black ooze or something. A black pudding, yeah, that would have been scary. <laughs> black pudding. <laughs> also, um, before we go into the next guy, can we, um, where, where's um the loser's um punishment for Oh that? my Shut, goodness. Shut. Yeah, I, did I, I was wondering, you were supposed to do that early, but you did a toast instead. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, like half a no, we, we, do, we, do, we, do, we do the toast. Yeah, that's right. Toast. That's all right. We'll we'll let him get that. So Sam, final thoughts. And we'll do that last. Uh, we'll we'll do we'll we'll have him do that last. So okay, Sam, um, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, once again, I thought it was a little rarity, but this was it's a classic way to start a campaign or even a one shot. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought the um, dark vision restriction definitely played a point in it, but I had so much fun with the bard. Like, I know, like, in our own campaign, you've asked if I played one before, and I have not, not on, like, a, a long-term run, maybe, like, in a one-shot or, like, a short campaign once, but it was, it was, a, it was probably one of the most fun moments I've had playing D&D, &D, just, like, making all those terrible jokes for everybody, so I hope they enjoyed them as much as I did, and if not, that's perfectly okay, I did. <laughs> nice. And, um, yeah, that was, I enjoyed it a lot, it was good. All right. Bo, and I was, la I was the last to die again, so... We're going to have that be the last thing. So, Chuck, final thoughts? You know, I, I agree with these guys on, you know, if, if you were to take and say, throw a group into this and make them do what we did and then flash them forward and all of a sudden they're, they're a group of adventurers entering a town and then they find out this ring is going on in town where they're sacrificing these criminals and they have to break that up and the warden's the big bad evil guy. Or, you know, that would be pretty cool. Um, what I liked was this was booyah old school traditional low, low level i mean sewers rats gators gelatinous cube i mean that's that's like you know 1975 D. you know i mean that's 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 really grassroots basic this is how you get started kind of thing yeah and i appreciated that that was really cool do you nice. say roots or fruits roots. well in your case <laughs> you, you know <laughs> What? All right. So, Bo, as our only fucking, character fucking and first character death, what do you got a shot of today? George did No labels. No labels. We're just enabling him. There's That's nothing it. on it. He wanted the ludes. What do we got on it? It's George Dickel. It's a whiskey. The guy right. said it's better than some other things that I like, so I bought it. All right. <laughs> was, it, was he telling the truth? Let's have a shot, buddy. I mean, this is pretty much all I have left of it. So, all right. wow, that's awfully cloudy, dude. You said that was a whiskey. Oh, with a chaser. Well, I mean, shit. I've had like, I finished, like this vodka <laughs> because it was like, take your I, shot. I, I, we I did mean, our toast. I can't, I, was... I can't do shots anymore, really. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to when I when when I don't beat you guys and I have to do it. <laughs> So. Oh, so like if we kill it without any of us dying, you have to do the shot? He, yep. Aaron and I talking before the game, he thought that he was going to lose this week. That's true. 
So it was close, but yes, we'll Jack go didn't ahead and know end that the, was an option. Yeah, we'll go ahead and end the episode there. Something for you guys to look forward to. Please Next forward. episode, level thirteen. Next episode. So our I'm first super excited. high level one. So watch our videos for the preparation for our level thirteen. Yeah, that's one. good. That's gonna have some good prep. All right. So awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on episode three. Thank you, guys. Woo!